You're watching Bionic Dance. Don't run on automatic, it's dead. Please think. This season, we've been going over some of the arguments for the existence of God. Now, this isn't all of the arguments for God's existence, but this is a good place to start. If you're willing to be open to the evidence for God, then at least one of these arguments will probably make sense to you. The problem is that what we're about to hear is not a list of evidence, but rather a list of things you don't understand or don't like and substitute God in their place, as I'm about to show. So let's do this. <laughs> Greetings, fellow space travelers. Bionic Dance here. Today we're looking at a fellow who goes by My True Power 2, which isn't even a slightly presumptuous name at all. Nope. He's claiming to have evidence for God, but really what we're about to see is a list of things he finds to be unacceptable requirements for being an atheist, with the idea that God's existence becomes the only possible default conclusion if you don't think these things can be lived with. Which is, you know, silly. At best. As an atheist, you would need to accept the following. You'd need to accept that your senses have no proper function, and in fact that nothing in the natural world does. Uh, what? This makes no sense in the least. Our senses have plenty of function. Most of them help keep us alive, from finding food to evading danger. Although, I think the problem here might be phrasing. I think what he's saying is that our senses have no intended function, basically an argument from design. I think he's saying that it's unrealistic for us to think that our senses weren't given to us in order to be useful in the ways that they are, and that we have to accept that such useful bits of organ tissue and nerves are random. Of course, this completely ignores the concept of evolution by natural selection. The only way this argument could have the slightest bit of merit is if atheists thought that humanity and other life just went poof into existence out of nothing, which the vast majority of us, you know, don't. You'd need to accept that there is no good, adequate explanation for the existence of the universe. Yet. There didn't used to be good, adequate reasons for disease, the seasons, lightning, and other weather events, etc., etc., all attributed to one god or another in various religions. Then, science got its shit together and discovered perfectly natural reasons for all of the above. This is the God of the Gaps fallacy, using God as a placeholder for things we don't yet understand, the assumption being that we never will, despite the past showing this to be false about plenty of things. The future certainly holds many new discoveries to be made, and claiming that we don't know now is evidence for God is, well, short-sighted, at best. You'd need to accept that there's no such thing as objective moral values, and therefore that no actions can be really good. I already do accept this. In fact, I find the concept of objective morality to be nonsensical, because there is nowhere from which such standards could come. And don't tell me they can come from a god. That would just make them God's subjective morals, God's opinion on what is good or bad. Just because it comes from a god doesn't make anything objective. To be objective, something must exist outside of any mind. It cannot be a thought, feeling, or opinion. All of the above are still filtered through our subjective perception. The relevant definition for it is that it exists outside of the mind. Its existence is the case independent of the observer. To put it as simplistically as possible, an object. But good and bad are judgments, opinions. They cannot exist independently of the thinking subject, and thus the concept of objective morality is meaningless, nonsensical. You'd need to accept that in the end, human life is totally without any kind of real purpose or meaning, and that therefore no deed or accomplishment can be meaningful at all. Which might be disappointing, perhaps even depressing, but... so? Just because something sucks doesn't mean its reverse has to be true. And I have to ask, why isn't it enough that something is meaningful to us and the people around us? Is your ego truly so fragile that if your existence within it is not integral to the universe, you cannot find meaning or value in life? If you're not part of some god's plan, your world holds nothing worth having? Because that's a pretty horrible way to live. You'd need to embrace ignorance about the fine-tuning of the universe for intelligent life, simply accepting that there's no sufficient explanation for it. And again, having no adequate explanation for something doesn't mean therefore God. It just doesn't work that way. But more importantly, these fine-tuning arguments are backward. The universe isn't fine-tuned for life, 
Life is fine-tuned to the universe, no god required. Again, evolution by natural selection. Any species which cannot survive in its environment dies. Any individuals within a species which cannot survive die, and the resulting future offspring are more suited to their environment as the favorable traits are passed on from the parents. The universe wasn't molded for us. That's 100% backward. You'd need to claim that it's actually impossible for a maximally great being to exist. Oh, bullshit. All that's necessary is to not believe in one, for any reason, to any degree. If theists are believers, then atheists are not, regardless of any other factor, to any degree, be they staunch deniers, agnostics, or just people who don't give a shit. I realize this is not the definition of atheist that many people like, but it is the one that seems most popular among those who identify with the label. Presumably the more narrow definition, denialists and naysayers, is more popular among theists because it's easier to argue against, but it's also dishonest since it's pretty damn clear that the range of non-belief is rather larger than that. You'd need to accept that motion can begin without being caused by anything, in defiance of Newton's first law of motion. Given that your explanation for that is magic, something for which you don't have evidence, I'm inclined to wait until we can actually explain such things. This is just another God of the Gaps argument, where someone would prefer to have any answer, right or wrong, instead of, I don't know yet. You'd need to reject the notion that there's any sort of causal order in existence, seriously endangering the claims on which the scientific method rests. Again, your only explanation is magic, that a god has always existed, which breaks your own damn argument. If nothing can be uncaused, why does a god get to be a big ol' exception? Why would you expect anybody to just accept that because of, once again, something that isn't yet explained? God of the gaps, kiddo. You'd need to accept that things all exist by necessity, endangering science further. Even if the argument from necessity were true, it still doesn't prove that the necessary thing, whatever it may be, is a being of any sort, never mind it being a god, much less a specific god. It could be some sort of necessary quantum event or something similar. And even then, we've still got the nothing comes from nothing problem. So many of these arguments boil down to a bunch of rules and one big ol' exception with no evidence or explanation other than what we currently see as an unanswered paradox of some sort. This is not evidence for a supreme being. You'd need to accept that no action can be better or worse than any other action. I thought we covered this already with that objective morality crapola. Better and worse are subjective value judgments. I think what you need to accept is that life doesn't come with the unambiguous certainty that you so obviously crave, and that might just be tough shit. Now, of course, you don't need to accept all of these things, and you don't need to refute these arguments. There are two other alternatives that I think are open to someone who doesn't yet believe in God. Alternative one, accept that you hold an irrational position with respect to the existence of God. Well, given that I've just pointed out the flaws in these arguments, and pointed out how belief in God in the face of a lack of refutation of said arguments does not mean God wins by default, my position is anything but irrational. The truly irrational position is believing in God not merely without evidence, but without the right kind of evidence. You cannot and will not prove God's existence as a mere couch philosopher. If you're going to prove God, you're going to have to do it in a truly objective manner. Remember, objective means that something is external to the mind. If God truly exists, then you should be able to produce some evidence which can be taken to a lab and studied, a positive argument for God's existence, not merely an argument that says that if there are currently no answers, then God is the only possible answer. So without that objective evidence, God's existence is nothing more than bad sci-fi fantasy with some crazy-ass fanboys. Alternative two, become a theist. Uh-huh. Sure. Don't hold your breath. No, wait. On second thought, do that. That's all for now, so... So, I'm done with you. Until next time, fellow space travelers.